In this instructional video, we review the key kinesthetic elements in the process of knot tying, building from the basic maneuvers required to maintain appropriate working distance, all the way through the formation of half hitch knots, and finally to the careful adjustment of tension required for laying down square knots. The gathering and sliding maneuvers are important for adjusting the relative lengths of the sutures to establish a comfortable working distance of four to six inches from the knot. To gather, start by grasping the suture between the thumb and forefinger only. This emphasizes the delicate nature of the task. Supinate the hand and regrasp the suture with the last three digits. Note that the different fingers play different roles in the gathering process. Release the suture from the thumb and forefinger. Then pronate the wrist in order to regrasp the suture further down with the thumb and the forefinger. This maneuver can be repeated over and over in order to gather excessive distance from the knot. Note that each repetition of the gathering maneuver shortens the working distance by one hand's breadth. To slide, lightly grasp the suture between the thumb and the forefinger and slide up from the knot in order to lengthen the working distance. Note that sliding makes finer adjustments than gathering. You can combine the gathering and sliding maneuvers to obtain a comfortable working distance from the knot. Sliding can also be accomplished at the end of a gather maneuver without dropping the suture from the last three digits by simply allowing the suture to slide lightly through the hand. This maneuver is useful for fine adjustments before initiating knot formation. We recommend becoming adept at the gathering and sliding maneuvers prior to moving on to the next steps in knot tying. Practicing these maneuvers, you can begin to appreciate how delicately the sutures should be handled. An excellent way to practice the gathering and sliding maneuvers is by treading water or gathering and sliding in one place on the suture to develop kinesthetic memory. The locking maneuver prevents suture from slipping through the hands and secures a comfortable working distance. After gathering to the desired distance, instead of pronating to regrasp the suture lower with a thumb and forefinger, use the third finger to hook the suture into the grasp of the last three digits. This prevents the suture from sliding out of the hand and accidentally lengthening the working distance, while simultaneously freeing the thumb and forefinger to form knots. The first actual knot we will teach is formed with active participation from both hands, hence the name two-handed, and we will begin by teaching how to lay the knot down as a half hitch. Begin by using gathering and sliding maneuvers to obtain the proper working distance, being sure to avoid an excessively long tail held in the dominant hand. Lock the suture with the non-dominant hand to form the post, leaving the thumb and forefinger free to participate in forming the knot. Form a C with the thumb and forefinger of the non-dominant hand. To lead with the forefinger, hook the post over the forefinger. Move the tail between the thumb and the forefinger, then pinch the thumb and forefinger together. Roll the non-dominant hand, open the thumb and forefinger, and now firmly pinch the tail. Crisply supinate in order to flip the tail through the loop. This forms the knot. To lead with the thumb, hook the post over the thumb. Move the tail between the thumb and the forefinger, then pinch the thumb and forefinger together. Roll the non-dominant hand, open the thumb and forefinger, and now firmly pinch the tail. Crisply pronate in order to flip the tail through the loop. This forms the knot. The next step is to lay the knot down. Holding the post vertically, perform a gathering maneuver on the tail to slide the loop down. Use your forefinger to apply direct pressure to the suture just beyond the knot itself to tighten it. Finally, we perform a stable recovery by lightly sliding up on the tail to the desired working distance. The post has remained locked throughout the entire process and should not have shifted. When we speed up the formation of half hitch knots, it becomes very apparent that the hand holding the post barely has to move to throw knots, while the hand holding the tail, or the working end, moves in a very precise fashion to lay the knots down. Once you have mastered the half hitch, you are ready to tackle the venerated square knot. 
This knot is thrown in the same way as the half hitch, but the magic is in how it's laid down. The setup for the square knot should be the same as that for half hitches. Begin by gathering and sliding to a comfortable working distance, then lock the post. Although the square knot is formed in the same way as the half hitch, the way the knot is laid down is critical. Pay careful attention to the relative direction of pull on the suture ends as you lay the knot down. The tension must be even and directly opposite. There are two ways of optimizing the ergonomics to make it easy to pull equal and opposite tension as you lay down a square knot. The first of these ways is crossing the suture. In this technique, it is important to recognize whether to lead with a thumb or the forefinger. If the working end of the suture starts crossed in front of the post, lead with the forefinger. This throws a knot that is easy to lay down with equal tension. If you mistakenly lead with the thumb, the resulting knot will not lay down flat. By the same token, if the working end of the suture starts crossed behind the post, lead with the thumb in order to throw a knot that is easy to lay down with equal tension. If you mistakenly lead with the forefinger, the resulting knot will not lay down flat. The second way to lay down flat square knots is useful if the suture starts out uncrossed. In this case, you may lead with either the forefinger or the thumb, it doesn't matter. However, you will have to cross your arms in order to apply even and opposite tension to the suture ends. Notice that when you lead with the forefinger, you should cross your arms by moving them in a counterclockwise fashion, but when you lead with the thumb, you should cross your arms by moving them in a clockwise fashion. Remember, before tying any square knots, you get to decide whether to cross the suture or your hands. It is a good idea to practice both. This section teaches you a different technique for throwing knots. The hand holding the tail of the suture does all of the work, hence the name one-handed. Remember that this technique refers to how the knots are thrown and not how they are laid down, so you can create either half hitch or square knots with this technique. Holding the post straight and locked, grasp the tail firmly between the thumb and forefinger of your dominant hand. Supinate so that the suture is hooked over the fourth digit, then bring your hands towards the post so that the two suture ends cross between the second and third digits, forming a four. Next, use the third digit to hook underneath the tail so that it can be grasped by pinching between the third and fourth digits. Pulling on the tail now flips it through the loop to form the knot and the tail can be regrasped more firmly between the thumb and the third finger in one fluid motion. Use a regular gathering maneuver to position your hand to lay down the knot. Holding the post straight and locked, grasp the tail firmly between the thumb and the third digit of your dominant hand. Pronate so that the suture is hooked over the forefinger, then bring your hand towards the post so that the two suture ends cross between the thumb and forefinger Next, use the forefinger to hook underneath the tail so that pulling on the tail now flips it through the loop to form the knot. Use a regular gathering maneuver to position your hand to lay down the knot. One-handed knots may seem complicated at first, but once mastered, can be used to throw knots quickly and with great finesse.